reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. We're going live on YouTube right now. And so hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. So I have a question for you. Do you have a young kid in your family, it could be a grandchild or a child, who is really grieving the bodily loss of a grandmother or a grandfather who has left his or her body? You know, children and their parents often are afraid that they're going to forget the loved ones who have left their bodies. Notice I don't say die, I say left their bodies. My guest today believes that there are many ways that kids and their families can remember loved ones. And thanks to her wonderful new children's books, we are now able to help our little ones connect with those that they've lost in body and help them remember how much they are loved and how that bond of love never dies. So today I want to share with you the courageous story of Heather Lean, and I want to talk with you about her highly anticipated new children's book, Angel Grandpa, published by Puppy Dogs and Ice Cream, and her first book was Angel Grandma. Now, Heather is an author by day and a mother of two, and she's also an attorney, and She has been pursuing her dream in writing children's books with these two books, Angel Grandma and Angel Grandpa. Angel Grandma was written right after she grieved the loss of her mother-in-law and her mother. And Angel Grandma is a book that is poignant and yet tender. It touches on the theme of loss and love and it's helped her explain to her own kids what it is like when you lose someone, but you don't lose their love because the love never leaves us. And the illustrations, I can attest to this, they are ethereal, they're beautiful. They are, they just open your heart and stimulate a child's fantasy. Now, Angel Grandpa, her second book sparked her passion and her life's purpose. And she found herself writing several other books as well. Uh, Heather lives in New York and she loves to spend time with her family, friends and pets writing and learning and growing. And she has four hens, three cats, a puppy <laughs> named Bo, and uh, an entire menagerie. So welcome, Heather. Thank <laughs> so, you so much. Yes. So, welcome to my crazy life. Exactly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to have you. So I, I'll try to speak and not woof or go bow wow or meow. <laughs> or speak. So Heather, you, you know, you know my work and I always say, don't reminisce, right? Because reminisce rhymes with the word miss. Yeah. Miss and reminisce to me are synonymous that the only way to really ease the pain of loss of a bodily, of a loved one's bodily departure is to reconnect. Mm-hmm. And so I, I love what you're doing here in these books. And I actually read them and I immediately felt like a little kid when I read them because literally the art itself just opens the entire heart. I yeah. just, oh, and it bring, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful pair of books uh, because you know how like a lot of the books that are written for kids are really written for the adults? Right. It, 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 it's a beautiful, beautiful series that you've created. So do you wanna tell us what your journey was like and how you were led to create Angel Grandma first? Yeah, it's so it's it's a funny story because Angel Grandma, um, it it wasn't my first book that I wrote. I actually my story is a little bit like all stories, you know, the journey is a little bit windy and whatnot. But just that guidance and that intuition, you know, I, I was going through a very hard time. Obviously, grief is a very personal journey after I lost I lost my mother in law first and then my mom, and it was in less than two years time span. I'm little kids. And so I, I was in a very deep despair, deep pit of, of grief. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really get out of it. And the story, you know, it's, I just randomly got a message from somebody one day on Instagram, social media. And now sometimes people look at that, you know, skeptical and, and just say, you know, not to trust it. I remember my dad saying, don't trust these people, but um, it was for an orphanage. It was for an orphanage in Africa. 
And, you know, I don't know what it was, you know, this felt very different. I had, I had um, sent them through, you know, a little bit of money or whatever, because I saw the pictures and I saw something clicked in with me that these kids are orphans. They lost both their parents and they're so little. I mean, they're three and they're four and they're smiling and they still feel love. And I'm like, how can these kids, they, they have every right to be mad at the whole world. Like, you know, they have no parents. They probably lost them in some horrific, you know, accidents or whatever. And they can find joy. And I was looking for it. I was calling it to me. I was like, how can I find joy now? I'm, you know, I was very depressed. And um, just giving that to them, I got a message back within a day. It was like a video of all these kids sending, we love you, we're sending you love. And I just felt something so, you know, this is, these are people I never met before. I didn't know. I just gave something, not thinking anything will come back in return, just whatever. I can send them a little bit of money and maybe it'll help them. And when I got that video message, I was crying tears of joy. I was crying. I was like, you know, just thinking, and, and again, no books were coming to my mind at this point. This was just the first act. And when I was driving, I drove a lot for work. So I'm driving on the highway and I'm listening to actually Napoleon Hill, you know, Think and Grow Rich. And he was just saying, when something pops in your head, you know, and, and he's saying it from a business standpoint, that book is much more than just that, you know, the intuition when something pops in your head, go with it. And the thought that popped in my head was to write a children's book and, you know, maybe give back some money, the funds, the proceeds raised for charities. And that was all, that was just the beginning of the journey because as I wrote the first book and I look back and like, it was my first book. I really didn't think I'm an author. I didn't think very much of it, but I just started that pen to paper. And as I opened that door, other things came through. I'm like, I'm going to write a poem, to, you know, for my children about my mom and, you know, maybe to explain it. So the first poem was very, you know, very deep. It was, it was for me. And then I kind of made it more into a children's book, but it, it was like, love never dies. It never ends. I'm still with you. And um, I was trying to explain it to my daughter who was asking about, you know, her grandmas and, and where they went. And I was like, I need a book like this. You know, I looked, I looked at, you know, online and like, there's, there's grief books, but it kind of left me feeling more sad than hopeful. And I think, you know, children just need hope, whatever, whatever it is. And I'm not trying to, you know, sway them into a, a, something that I don't believe in. I started to believe it. I started to see the signs. I started to see those things come in. And that was the first thing that I was like, wow, I could really do this. I had people push me. But Angel Graham was the first book that I went with because I knew I would come up with a lot of obstacles within myself that I just didn't want to back down. And I had to be so attached to the message and to the calling behind it. I was like, this is the first book I'm gonna put out and it's gonna be for my mom and for my children and for our relationship, you know, showing that the love is still there. She, she hasn't left them. That's beautiful. And you know, there's a lot of quantum physics research now proving, you know, like from even Albert Einstein said, mm -hmm. energy can't be destroyed, right? Yeah. You know, and in Love Never Dies, I go through all the science for all the rational minded yes. people who need the science, right? But, you know, your heart knows, you know, you know, you can feel love is something you feel. And I have had that experience, you know, I didn't believe in God or the afterlife either, as you know. And when Jean came through to me, okay, signs, moving things, turning lights on and off, machines on and off, I filmed it all, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I knew always that there was this incredible feeling of love that just burst through my heart before he would make a manifestation. Yeah. So, you know, people say, well, you can't prove it. Well, how do you prove God? You know, it's right. a feeling, it's love. So, and your loved ones in spirit are one with God. Yes. So they are love. So, you know, and what I like about what you're doing in the books is you're finding a way to get that message across to kids because kids are not going to be swayed by quantum physics research, right. you know, but the, 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 you know, Heather, I did, never told anyone this story. I heard this from a patient. It was amazing. They told me that their, their child was grieving the grandfather who had just left his body a week before. Mm -hmm. And the grandfather was perfectly healthy. Nothing wrong with him. Okay. They're driving in the car, mother and father in the front the child in the back seat. 
unbeknownst to mom and dad, he had unclicked his seatbelt. Oh no. They get into a car crash and the little boy starts careening forward. He's gonna go right through the windshield. Oh my back God. To him. And the next thing that happens is the little boy says that he felt a hand grab his shoulder and push him back into his seat. And that's when I realized I still get chills when I think- I just got chills too. Right? Grandpa knew the accident was gonna happen because there's no time, right? right. Past, present, future, they're all happening at the same time. When you have a premonition, you're just, right? Seeing yeah. in the future that's already happened. Grandpa saw the accident, knew the only way he could save his grandchild was to be in spirit form. Yeah. So he left his body to help. Wow. And that is such a profound story, isn't it? Oh my God. Yeah, I have chills everywhere. <laughs> I know, but yeah. th that is true. Our loved ones in spirit really, really become our earth angels, our bodyguards, our guides, all this. Yeah. And that the, the stories, I love the pictures. Thank and you. Because the pictures themselves evoke the feeling of connection. You right. know, I'm still here. You just can't see me. Right. Now, do you think, do you think little kids would understand this um, because sometimes we'll use this analogy with little ones. You know how water can take many forms? Sometimes right. it could be steam. Sometimes it could be ice. Sometimes it could be um, steam, ice, water. Well, the fifth phase of water, yeah. we're not going to talk about where it's like a jelly. But, but when, you, when you tell kids this, so that's the same thing that happens right. to grandma or grandpa, right? You don't see them now. Let's pretend that's just... Um, ice we could see the block of ice but now they're like steam it's right, right. another property of water they're here you just don't see them you think kids would get that I feel like they would you know because my my daughter has asked like why you know she she wanted to see you know she wished she could see and of course I mean I would wish that too um but I think that's why we just had one image in the book of an angel and, you know, in the beginning, kind of watching over them and the rest kind of show that she's she he or is with them and, and little, you know, I didn't tell anyone, but obviously you can probably pick it up. There's like a little feather on each page. So it's like, you know, little symbols that they're still with them, even though they can't physically see their body. So yeah. it's just it was like, you know, symbolic. But, um, you know, it did, it did explain that to my daughter. She is in a different form, but she's still here with you. She I think she gets it. I mean, you know. It's it tells me she does. Adults yeah. to get it too. I know. It's hard for yeah. adults. Adults were so you know in the material world right. that it's hard to get what we don't see. Right. But if you stick with the feeling, yes. You know because there's always a feeling like you know the chills that you and I had. Yeah. When they're present to us, we feel chills or like a tingling in the back of the skull or a big feeling of love. So yeah. Kids are so open to love. That's for sure. You yes. know, feel it. You know, um, one of the things I started to do was the Love Never Dies Children's Retreat because I knew mm -hmm. this was before I knew you and I, before I knew about your book. I knew kids really needed help. Yeah. yeah. So all the kids came to my, my farmhouse in Millbrook and we began one by one having them dialogue with the loved one in spirit. And I like the dialogue because it, it makes, it's a very concrete feeling of not only are you here in the abstract through symbols, I'm talking to you, right. you're right. talking to me. And the little girl, it was so amazing. And I think this is true, not only for kids, but for grownups too. People get very angry. Why did you do this to me? Why did you leave me? And the anger lowers the vibration yeah. so much that it makes it really hard to sense the signs, and or to communicate directly. So we began the dialogue and she started to cry and she said, I know you're here, but I don't feel it because I'm so angry. And she started admitting this and weeping. And she says, I want to be freed of this anger so that I can feel your love again, because I know you're here. And after she raged a bit, it like broke through right. Right. her armor. And then she was able to feel her dad. So it's so important and she was only five years old you know, we, people don't give credit to kids how emotionally intelligent they are yeah how, how much they're capable of how much they are i mean they're our guides in so many ways right yeah 
Oh, my daughter is, is my teacher. <laughs> she yeah. definitely teaches me, you know, how, how, how to live, you know, she's, she's just, it, she's in the now she's in the present moment. And, um, she is, she is pure love. My daughter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You are too. Thank you. you. Are. Your oh, energy is all about love. You know, as you get older and you get hurt more, maybe you yeah. don't eat with your heart chin, you know, but it's obvious your daughter is you, you know. Thank you. She's a, she's a, I little... did something right. <laughs> I did yeah. something right with, with both my kids, but, um, yeah, no, I, I agree with you about the, about the emotions. Cause I think I, I think I very quickly realized I don't want to be in that state of lower, you know, hurt and pity. And, and I, I was asking like, let me help me move through this because exactly. yeah, exactly. And you know, people who come to me to do the, uh, the uh, grief relief sessions or the energetic system upgrade, if they think that they don't just need to reconnect and heal unfinished business, but they need another kind of healing. Every single person who's grieving always says the same thing. You know, I, I am so miserable. And all they do is cry, cry, mm -hmm. cry over the loss, the loss, the loss. And the more you get stuck, like, you know, focusing on, I call it the hole in the donut, yeah, you know, because the entire donut is the spirit body of your loved one, right? The hole in the donut is the missing physical body. So wow. it's easy when grieving to just fall into the hole in the donut. And I, yeah. miss, you, I miss you, I miss you. And it, it just lowers the vibration and makes you more and more miserable and makes you more ships in the night because you just can't reconnect. Yeah. You're so miserable. So if I can just get people to just do the reconnection, suddenly, like, oh, I feel you. I feel your love. Oh, I'm not sad, you know, yeah. but you've got to lift the needle, the broken record, you know, uh, lift the needle off the record. I miss you. I miss you. And your book is a very graceful way of doing it. It's just let's cut to the chase. They're here. Yeah. I love you. Yeah, I love that. And it's, it's so funny. I think I think actually the, the first book I even read on the spiritual journey was uh, and it's, it's very funny because I know you talk about this, too, like uh, when, when we dream, when we we're in a, in a state of allowing, of letting it in because we don't have that ego, the blocks, the stuff that's shutting it out during the day. Your mind is constantly going. And the first book I actually, I saw it on a post on Instagram or something. It was like Charlie Morley's uh, uh, Lucid Dreaming. And I was like, in my thought, in my rational scientific mind, I was like, you know what? I don't even care if it's real or a dream. If I can see my mom in my dream, if I can connect with her again, I'll feel less sad because- to think I'll never hear her voice again. I'll never see her face. I'll never be connected. That's what I was in. So I said, you know what? I'm going to, I started learning about lucid dreaming. And, you know, she's even, I've even had, you know, her come in my dreams and very real where I just, I woke up hysterically crying, just releasing all this because, you know, my mom had Alzheimer's. She, she was sick for nine years and early onset, very bad, very quick. Um, and so even preparing all that, I was not prepared to lose my mom. So when I had this dream of her, you know, she called me on a payphone, like who even has payphones anymore? There's no payphones. And I'm like, I pick up and it's collect call. And it's like, so random. And she's like, you know, can you come pick me up? I'm ready to go home. I'm, I'm, I'm not sick anymore. And I'm like, what? And like, and I get there and the nurse is like, she, you know, moves herself off the table. She gets up and I'm like, I embrace her. And I woke up and I just hysterically crying. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, I have chills just thinking of it now. And I'm like, I feel like, you know, in the beginning, I was like, I just want to see her face, even if in a dream. But I really feel like that was a message. I am no, no sick. Any, I'm not sick anymore. I'm, you know, I'm whole. I'm that was beyond a lucid dream. Yeah. I think that was the visitation. Yeah. I really do. Because, you know, when you're dreaming, when you're asleep, you're out of body. Right. It's so much easier for you to energetically connect with them and for them to connect with you. And that was really a visitation. And, you know, yeah. they're working on the soul phone, which is like a pay phone. Where you could literally get on the phone and hear their voices. Wow. Heather, this is no joke. I mean, in my Zoom coaches training, we frequently see shadows and specters of the spirits of Jean or our loved ones coming across wow. the screen. And we hear voices and we hear papers, like people are taking notes. Wow. So 
I sent the recording to an afterlife researcher and he said, I hear a man's voice saying they're calling, they're calling, they're calling. Mm. That's not what he was saying. It was Jean saying the calling, the <laughs> call. Because we wrote a novel called The Calling. Oh and my God. Publish it. That's so funny. We actually heard it. And wow. so they, it's amazing how much they are trying to connect with us to literally visit us in the dreams it's easier but as you perfect your ability to um reconnect you can do it when you're awake and it's fantastic it's just fantastic you know i have a coach she was grieving so badly she had been nursing her husband for four years round the clock wow. she couldn't even shower he needed her round the clock wow. and when he finally left his body I mean, she just collapsed, you know, yeah. such grief, her whole life over. She loves this man. She goes to a medium and this happens a lot. You know, yeah. they get really messed up, get rid of his clothing. You're holding him back from going into the light. What the mm. heck is that? They're right here. Yeah, you know? exactly. They're not going anywhere. So, I mean, that's quantum physics too. The dark matter, right? right. 95% of the universe is dark matter just because it doesn't reflect light. And that's where they are. Yeah, the majority, the the bulk of the universe that we don't see. So get rid of his clothes, let him go. You're stopping him from getting in the light and she gets more depressed. So oh my God. Says, you've got to talk to Dr. Turndorf. So she comes to me. I help her reconnect. She's happy. Yeah. And then her friends say, you need to see a psychiatrist. Something's wrong with you. You're too happy. You shouldn't be. So oh, my happy. God. Everyone has an opinion. <laughs> right. You, when you reconnect, you are joyful. Right. You know, as you know, because we're not supposed to be separated from the people no, we love. That, we're not. That's what it is. Everyone feels that separation. Like they're here, they're there, I'm here. They left me, um, you know, woe is me. I mean, I mean, Mother's Day is coming up and, you know, it's always a little bit hard, you know. Um, but I do feel that, I would just call it peace. I do feel peace in my heart because now I know what I, and I was on the other level. I was on, the depression. And I, I know the downward spiral. I've been there before and I was going there, you know, my bot, like my body was worn out and I was taking care of kids working, not dealing with the grief, not moving through it. And, um, and now I, I do feel a sense of peace because I, I do even just this book calling is something that a passion that has ignited within me that I, you know, a year ago, two years ago, I, would never have thought I was going to write a children's book. Now it's like, oh, I right. love it. Yeah. And the thing is, when you reconnect, you just lift your grief. Right. You accept we're having a relationship. One of us is in spirit. Right. But our relationship continues. We're going to continue after a short break. Be back with you in a moment. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's Dr. Jamie Turndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. 
Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello again and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn On The Love on Binge Network TV and YouTube Live, which we're streaming right now. I'm talking with the wonderful Heather Lean. She is an attorney by day, a mother of two, and the author of two really wonderful children's books, Angel Grandma and Angel Grandpa. So, Heather, do you feel like because this is the week leading up to Mother's Day, do you feel like you have a dip in your mood? You know, I I think it would be... um you know, obviously not honest to say it doesn't affect me in some way. I, you know, I, I, right after I lost my mom and it was, it was, I, I did believe I, in, in some sense, I had a, a very big spiritual journey after I lost her. Um, I didn't, I did believe in a God and, you know, I do believe in God and, and, and a higher connection of love, but um, it was a very sobering experience to not you know, and I was preparing for my mom's death for a long time because she was sick. But when she physically left, you know, this this world and her body was no longer here, it, it felt like, you know, the person who brought you into this life is no longer walking, you know, physically walking it with you. And that was a very, um, you know, a very hard experience for me to go through. Again, at that time, I was I was in grief. But um you know, do, do I, would I love to hug her in the physical, of course, you know, would I love to show her pictures of my daughter and just say like, you know, and hear her laughing or, you know, see her with my daughter. Yes. So there's always going to be some Don't sense. That. Don't yeah. say that because the transdimensional grief resolution method is about really reconnecting and feeling your loved yeah. ones and when you really get good at it you feel them you can feel them hugging you and kissing you so Uh don't want to say oh it's always going to be there as a loss some of my make love to their husbands in spirit and they both have to smoke a cigarette after (laughs) but i'm serious yeah is it is we all have the ability to send and receive energetic communications you just have to be able to go into that special trance to help you to do if you want me to help you do this, Aww. help you reconnect with her for Mother's Day and show you how to do it. And then we're, we all have this innate ability. You just have to learn to tune to the spirit channel. Yes. That's it. Tune you, to the right radio station. Yeah, yes. they're on two, they're <laughs> on seven or nine or whatever. So you have to learn to tune to the right channel. I put you in a trance, you tune to the right channel. And then when you are in this trance, you're not grounded in the earth plane. So you can right. actually feel the physical connection you can even though it's paradoxical how can I feel your physical connection when now I'm out of my body but you feel the sensations of the physical connection in your body and then also I really believe this and I'm I'm sure people will think I'm out of my mind nuts but I believe you should celebrate 
the holidays at, with your loved one in spirit. So you should actually do a Mother's Day celebration, uh -huh. show the pictures to her while you're in a trance, feel what she's saying back, do it. Yeah. Keep her in your day-to-day -day life. And I think the kids are more open to this than the grown-ups because kids get things aren't so black and white. Kids right. are all live in the spirit more till we beat that out of them yeah yeah no I agree I, I love that you say that and you know because I I do connect but I'm so I'm a newbie in all of this I'm so new to the whole spiritual you know awakening realm and um I'm just grateful I'm on the path I I do feel much better than when I was before oh you for know? sure and the, and you know you're you were meant, I think, to meet me because I think it was Temple Hayes who told yes. you to connect with me. You told her about your books. And I really believe that your books are a pathway for parents and their kids to really reconnect. Yeah. And, and you know, right before we took the break, I said we're not meant to be separated from those we love. You have a soul bond. That's eternal. Yes. And the grief will never pass. That's why I object to the Western approach. Grieve, let go, move on. You right. don't move on. You don't move through. Because as, if anything, grief gets worse yep. as it passes. Because you're not supposed to be separated from the people you love. No amount of time is going to change that. Yeah. So I truly, truly believe that we need to have a paradigm shift. We don't say death or dying. We say just left his body. And right. reconnect. bring them to the the holiday table, the Mother's Day table, the the softball games, really. Yeah. And I know people are going to just, you know, want to put a net on me. I don't care because I know it's true. Yes. I know it's true. And I know it'll help your kids and all the kids that, you know, you help through your book to just keep remembering. They don't just love you from afar. They're right here. Yeah. That's, and it's funny, so many, sometimes things come through you that you're not even fully grasped on. So even just, even just the message, like I wanted them to know, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, they're, they're up there. They're in heaven. They can't come down. They're in a different, you'll, you'll see them like your book talks about this. You'll see them when you die and then you can see them again. It's like, well, that's a very long time away. That's a very sad, I have to go through the rest of my life, not knowing, not seeing, not feeling. And that didn't resonate with me. So it was like, I wanted the book to be about, you know, again, because my first round at it, I had the angels walking with my daughter, you know, like the, the pictures of the, of the girl and the boy. And um, my daughter got upset. Well, why can't I see the, why can't I see her here? And I was like, you know what? I have to make this more of a different concept they can grasp where, you know, you see the one picture of the angel and then you just know they're following with you. You don't see the boys or the girls with an angel beside them, but you see them living their life and the presence, you know, equating to a feather or what they're, they're there. So, you know, pictures come sometimes a lot across better than even with words, but Ooh, yeah. you know, how they, how can they relate to that? That's and, really smart that you knew that because so often, you know, when they do, when we do play therapy with kids, you don't talk, you draw. Right. So it's pictures, it's visual. And whoever you, you said in the book, there were two, illustrators but it's just seemed almost like from the the soul you know yeah. the universal soul of love so it could have been from one artist there was it was seamless whoever yeah. did the art piece of art Thank you. Other, it all fit together like it was one collective unconscious soul artist and I love the picture of the little boy well, you repeated it in the little boy's book, Angel Grandpa, it was first in Angel Grandma. You yes. See, the pictures really did stick with me. In Angel Grandma, the little girl, and then later in Angel Grandpa, the little boy, were looking out the window at this oh. big moon with the stuffed doll, the teddy. Yeah. And it's yeah. just, it was just beautiful. That feeling of my little bear is connecting to me and loving me yeah. and all connecting to my, my grandma and grandpa. And you know, I think you've tapped into something special here too, because the love of grandma and grandpa is more unconditional for a kid yeah. than mom and dad, because mom and dad have to be the one to put them to bed and punish yeah. them. But grandma and grandpa's come on over, eat Captain yeah. Friends, let's stay up late and watch it. You know, so that is such an, like an even more traumatizing loss. Yeah. 
you're the one who just loved me unconditionally and yeah be so much fun so i love that you're you're focusing on that your grandma's still here your grandpa's yeah. still here. it's beautiful now talk about angel grandpa a little more we only have three minutes left in this segment but just if you would start telling us a little bit more about how that came about and then in the last segment we can discuss that book more yeah so i mean i i wrote angel grandma originally for my mom and then my my dear editor karen she's like you have to do grandpa and it's like okay, I'll, I'll get, you know, I have all these other books in my head. I'm going to get around to it. She's like, no, you have to do it now. And you know, so, so that was really through her wisdom that she told me. And, and, and it's so true because, um, you know, the, the loss, and this was before COVID, you know, I mean, I, I think I told you, I think it was like 2019 when I first started all this and um, I had no idea this was going, you know, obviously no one did, <laughs> but um, I, I'm so glad I did it because it is helping. You know, I, I read the reviews. People, I, I don't comment on it, but I, I do check in on the reviews and people are saying it's helped them. So there's no greater feeling than, than you know, g- giving some, some relief, you know, some, some hope to, to a child that may be grieving through this process. And that's a beautiful thing that I didn't even expect it to turn out like this when I first started. So yeah, you know, wonderful. your mom gave you the call. Yes. So it's interesting because your mother is very present. She's always Aww. around you. I feel her very strongly. And she, you know, I didn't know this until I discovered this. I went to Lilydale to give the Love Never Dies workshop. After I give the workshop, Jean says to me, go to the lake. There's somebody you have to talk to. So I go. And as I get to the gazebo over the lake, I hear slosh slosh the sound of oars over water and I look up wow. there's this guy in a canoe so he paddles on I don't even say hello but he comes back and we start to talk and he says his mother has Alzheimer's oh. in a nursing home yeah. no he doesn't tell me this at first Heather oh. he says, I hear his mother oh my god I say how long has it been since your mom left her body he said what do you mean she's in her what do you mean? She's in a nursing home Wow. with Alzheimer's. And I said, but I'm tuning into her spirit. Wow. Like she's out of her body. And she's saying, you know, you're a good son. You don't have to visit me anymore because I'm not there. Oh, and that's God. when I realized when they have Alzheimer's, they're not even in their body anymore. Yeah. And what we think of as so unintelligible, whatever it is they're saying, it's because they're talking in spirit. Yeah. So she was yeah. in spirit. And this was a really big joint mission for the two of you. She really wanted to get this message out to you. I'm still here. Help the children. She oh. really loves the children. Oh, Your mother- yeah, she, she, the last thing she, um, the last real conversation we had before she fully lost her speech was I told her I was pregnant with my daughter. I found out it was a little girl and she was so happy. And I just remember telling her I'm like go did you hear me mom like you know it's a little girl and she's like yeah you know she's making the noises and I'm like are you happy and she's like you know I could hear I could hear in her voice she didn't even have to say anything I could hear it and um yeah it, it it's it's such a it is such a hard disease but I you know I always said I'm like I always just feel even when I went to visit her I feel that connection you know she would be in a in a space or very not coherent and then she'd hear my voice and, you know, her head would just turn and just like connect with me. And I, and I felt that from even before she passed away. You know, some people, you know, in my family, oh, she's a vegetable, she's a this. I'm like, I never saw it like that. I always saw, I can connect with her even if she's not there for most of the time, you know? You're very spiritual and you intuitively knew she's not really all here. But when she heard your voice, you kind of pulled her back to the earth plane. Yeah. Right, so yeah. I got to hold. I got to hold us and pull yes. back for one second to go to a break. We'll be back okay. in a moment. See you in a few.
it's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's Dr. Jamie Turndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. Heather, could you see that I was um, checking an email and typing during the break? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's because I got an email from the syndicator who said we'd love to have Heather's books on the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network's oh id book of the month. Ask Thank her, you. Ask her if it's wow. okay for you to share her email. I can explain to her all the benefits. So it's amazing. I, well, just yes. Thank you. That's amazing. I'll, she's listening to the show, so she'll hear yes, but <laughs> I will also <laughs> make sure she gets in touch with you. Thank so you. we were talking, you are welcome. We were talking before the break about Angel Grandpa. So how did that one come about? Yes, my my editor pushed me. My, of the many people that have came into my life, I I I just have to say it's like it's it's just a beautiful. I know they're being guided to come into my life through my mom, even just it, people. I think I met like, you know, 20, 30, 40 people in the past, you know, year and a half that have helped me along this journey. And my editor was, was one of those people. She helped me, you know, kind of fine tune it. And, and she told me to um, do it. Grandpa, she told me I, I had to do more books too. <laughs> but, um, she's just, you know, encouraging, but she's, she's like, you know, kids are suffering you need to help them and it's so beautiful did you did I mean I know that the the bodily loss of mom 
and your mother-in-law sparked Angel Grandma. And I know that your editor told you you need to do Angel Grandpa, but I was wondering, was there another personal story beyond that that comes to bear on Angel Grandpa or just that your agent helped you? Well, my um, actually my grandfather, I was very close to you, my mom's dad um, who, who passed away, um, say back was 2011. And, um, and I named my daughter Shay after him. We know in, in the Jewish religion, you name after the first letter. So his name was Sam and he's, he's my, my grandfather, I'm very, very close with him, very connected with him. It's, and now him and his daughter, my mom are in the other, you know, in, in the non-physical plane together. So, yeah. Heather, did you notice before we went on air, I called my engineer by a Yiddish name. And after I said it, I thought, why did I say that? I, I did him, notice that. I was like, is it his name, Bob? <laughs> no, but Bub, like Bubala. Yes. And I thought, when I said it, why, why was I calling him <laughs> by this Yiddish name? And now I realize, you know, we are often used as open vessels, right? Yes. So you're, oh my God. I didn't know that, you know, you're Jewish and I didn't know any of that, but I, your mom was, I said, I felt she was present. Well, she made me say that Yiddish. Oh word. my God. My, my grandfather was like the king of Yiddish. He like always said Yiddish. Like I, I, the only thing I remember of all the things I'm like, gay cock and up and yum means go take a, in the ocean. It means like, oh, get out of here. So, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Because- yes. If you ask Bob, he will confirm. I have never, <laughs> in all the years we've been working together, ever. That's used so it. funny. Right, Bob? Oh, my God. It's the only one yet. It's a, a, a covered everything. <laughs> I was like, isn't his name Bob? I was like, why did you just call him? I call him Bob for Bubba. <laughs> I was like, Jamie, are you losing your mind? It's, oh my God. That is a gift for you. Thank you, Bob, for Thank being you. the, the uh, person who confirms the truth. <laughs> yeah. but don't it, tell me what else you call me. Yeah, well, but that, that is not Yiddish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so funny that they, um, they do this. And it's something Aww. that's so specific to them that will validate their presence. Yes. And... So often when I say things, I'm thinking, you're making a complete idiot of yourself. Why did you say that? And then they're like, well, she used to say that or like that is so funny. I did I did notice that and I was like, wow, that's not Bob. I don't know. That's his and that's did, amazing. Did you see, I kind of looked like, huh? Don't don't you know exaggerate why you said that. Oh my god. But you you were led to um then make reference to the fact that um the family's Jewish so that that way it would confirm why why I said what I said yeah that's a gift for you oh thank you I yeah my I I love my grandfather so close like like I said I named my daughter after him so yeah definitely okay, very so, connected um, I want to understand how do you name a daughter after your grandfather well, you, you use like the, the letter, you, a lot of times you just use the first letter. So I, you know, I wanted to use an S and we couldn't, we couldn't agree on anything S my, my husband and I, he's a Mets fan. So he wanted to spell it Shea, like the Shea stadium. I was like, that's not happening. <laughs> so we actually, her full name is Shayna, uh, which means beautiful and Shay, which is Gaelic for a gift from God. So I'm like, you know what? We got the best of both worlds. We can just go, like, we call her Shay, but yeah, she is she is very Shana, and Shana is that Yiddish too? It is, yeah, I think it means beautiful, beautiful face, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So the message is the same in both books. You said that you also have written other books. Are the other books that you have written also on this subject matter or other things? Well, it's funny that my book that just came out. Um, I didn't get it chance to give you a copy yet but it's uh it's everything you give comes back and it is it is about that story that you know I I gave from a place of not expecting anything back and from that came the wisdom the knowledge the guidance the the new path to to this which is is just it it, I love it if I if I never earned a dollar of course I would love to (laughs) earn money from it but if I never I I would just still do it because I love it that much and it's something ignited something in me from that 
from that moment. And whether or not that was my mom or intuition or whatever it was, I listened to it and I've been listening to it ever since. And I know, you know, the, the good thoughts that come into your head and the guidance versus the ones that are not, you know, not good, not loving, not kind. And um, that's how I've been following my path ever since. And is your husband spiritual? So he gets what you're doing? Uh, he thinks I'm, you know, he's always known he signed up for like a little bit of crazy, but it's okay. He's, he's, he's coming along. He's open. You know, we, we actually went to a medium together after my, my mom's, um, my mom passed away on April 4th and her birthday was April 5th. And I, and I nag you to not say passed away. And just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I'm she such, left. <laughs> I'm a judge. What can I, I know? It's okay. It's okay. That, that was, that was the day before her 68th birthday that um, she left. And um, so we went, we went to uh, a medium and my husband was open to it. And, you know, and there was a lot of confirmation in it. And, and I knew in my heart, but I needed to hear it from somebody else, which makes it feel all the more, the more real. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so it, it very much, you know, that's one of the things I always say to people, don't get addicted to mediums, you know, yeah it's a confirmation, it's a validation, but well, with, with the transdimensional grief resolution method, um, it is spiritual relationship therapy, if you want. So right. you reconnect, you dialogue, you heal unfinished business, which we all have something. And yeah. then after that's behind you, you can use the dialogues for guidance, for healing, emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever you need. So this is something you can do. Right. A direct relationship with your loved one in spirit without an intercessor. Right. But in the beginning, it, it's very helpful, right? To yeah. have somebody validate. Mm -hmm. No, it's very, and, and even the one that I went to was very, he was just like, you can do this yourself. And Good. he's like, he, he got very like, like, you know, he even said the ones that say, okay, they have to go now. You, you can only contact them through me. He's like, I, that makes me so angry. Oh, because angry. how do you tell, you know, someone who lost, God forbid, a child or something that you, they can only communicate to their child through a medium? Of course, no, that, of course I that's am nonsense. so furious. I almost said a word that my syndicator told me I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> so I'm not going to say it, yeah. but I was going to say urinating me off. Yeah. You know what I mean, because <laughs> yeah. that really urinates me off Yeah, because it's sort of like what's happening in the spiritual world is they have co-opted some of the organized religions mm -hmm. practices like, oh, you need your priest right. to be your intercessor to God. You can't have a direct relationship. And you need your priest because if you try to talk to spirit, you're going to invite devils and darkness. Yeah. Such garbage. And so now the mediums have capitalized on that. Okay, so now I have to be your intercessor. That really urinates right. off. Yeah. It's just another, it's another form of separation, another form of just saying you can't, and, exactly. and that feels not good, you know, and that's exactly, yeah. Exactly. So, okay. So you mentioned this other book where you tell the story about how your whole mission came to you. Is it, are there any other books? There are some, and in, in, I mean, I, I mean, a lot, kind of like it all came out at, at once, like in, in the beginning, it was, it was very like kind of fearful. So I had to get this all out you know, God forbid something happens to me, I got to get this all out. I don't want to die with anything. I don't want to cross over with anything still left in me. And so it was very um, like cathartic, like getting everything out. But um, yeah, I have one next coming out will be uh, Little Hands, which is like about my my son. He's my baby and he's my last baby, you know. Um, maybe I'll get more pets, but no more children, <laughs> according to my husband. And uh, it's just like the story of him kind of growing up. You know, I think everyone says be present be present in the moment and as a parent you're just like you know you're worrying about this to get so quick and, and you're never in the present like just like looking at your child and just you know I mean it happens but more often than not you get caught up in the minutia and so it's it's just kind of a book about like a, an open letter to like of love to the child saying like you know you're always going to be my baby and it kind of follows the the child like you see her see him growing up and then in the end, they're back in the beginning and she's holding him as a baby. And that, that hasn't happened yet. They're just still in the present. Oh, so that's it's, beautiful. Yeah. It gives me chills because it's like, it does go so fast. And if you, and if, you know, I'm reminded of the Ferris Bueller uh, quote, like life goes fast. If you're not paying attention, like you'll miss it. And that's, you know, the present moment is what we have. And that's where we have everything. That's so true. And, you know, 
con you can't connect with spirit in the past right uh, through reminiscences and you yeah. can't connect in the future so even the whole reconnection is in the now yeah. love is in the now right it's all yes. in the now you know you remind me of me in that when john left his body i started pouring poems out of me and i'd never written poems before and some of them were so um diabolically funny you know <laughs> um live your life now and enjoy your journey do this before your final ride on a gurney you know it's like that's yeah. what that's like you're talking about live in the now love right. in the now love in the now and what a love i can't wait to read all of your books thank you and, and, you know every you're just an angel you are an earth angel the purity of your heart and your soul comes through so in the last three minutes tell everybody all your coordinates, what you would like to promote now, your website, your social media, whatever you'd like to, to share. Okay. I'm not the greatest at social media, but my, my, pub, my books can be found at puppydogsandicecream.com. Um, if I type that in, that should, that should come up. And um, I'm at Heather Lean Author on Instagram, author lean on twitter and i think heather lean author on facebook i don't know i'm, I'm very bad at promoting all this all right, stuff, so. i'm gonna i'm gonna help you because i have it all right let's see your website is heatherlean.com facebook is heather lean author instagram heather lean author twitter author lean yes linkedin Heather Lean Esquire so that's more <laughs> that's my right? that's my pseudo like my other your, your personality yes yes exactly. but they can find all the they can find all the books on puppy dogs and ice cream dot com because i don't i don't really update my website as often as i should so <laughs> your mom is so proud of you you know that right me too thank you you Aww. do know that right yeah so proud of you she's she's adorable actually what i i can feel her being so she's funny too She's funny and sweet. She's kind of like Aww. reminds me of like a little terrier. You yeah. Know? Oh, oh, oh. She's adorable. <laughs> she's, she's really cute. You. And she Thank wants you. to celebrate Mother's Day with you, Heather. Not just Thank to you. honor her as your mother, but to celebrate what a beautiful mother you are to your kids and to all the kids who find their way mm -hmm. to your books. So you're going to make me cry, but it's the end, right? So I <laughs> don't want to mess up my makeup. It's good. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, it was so wonderful having you. I love what you're doing in the world. Keep me posted on whatever you want me to know that you're doing. My door is open to you. Now you're going to be on Dream Vision 7 Kids Book Corner. I already, Thank during you. the break, sent the info to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it was wonderful having you. So do you have one message you want to leave in the last, we have a minute. I, I just, I hope everyone that is, that is suffering. They find their way through it. They find that whatever that looks like for them and however long it takes them to get through to the other side, there is love and there's peace and, and our loved ones don't, don't leave us. They're still with us. And however long that takes you, I honor that process for everybody. And I just, I just want everyone to find that, that way home, that way through to peace. All right. That's a good message. So uh, you'll find your way home to me anytime you would like to come back. Thank you. The door will open to you. All right. So that's all I have for now. See you next time. And this Mother's Day, really don't reminisce, reconnect, talk yes. to your mom, talk to her at the table. I'm saying this to everybody watching and listening. Make it a beautiful Mother's Day. Reconnect and heal. You. See you next time. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.